Hi, I'm Skip Campbell with the Michigan Surgical Quality Collaborative, and I'm sitting here today with Lena Napolitano, who is a professor of surgery at the University of Michigan and head of the Division of uh, Acute Care Surgery. Lena, I've noticed over the uh, past several months that uh, your intensive care unit, the SICU, which you run, uh, has had some dramatic improvements in the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia. And I think all the uh, nurses and doctors who participate in the Michigan Surgical Quality Collaborative would appreciate hearing how you think you've accomplished such uh, dramatic results. Thanks, Skip. Um, we agree that uh, we've achieved uh, excellent results over the last uh, two years. We initially had actually a very high rate of ventilator-associated pneumonia, averaging about 22 to 25 VAPs uh, per 1,000 ventilator days. And we initiated a uh, multidisciplinary effort uh, to try to improve our VAP rates. We have what we call a VAP bundle, and uh, that uh, terminology was initially fostered by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, IHI. And their VAP bundle had four components. Um, it had spontaneous awakening and breathing trials, head of the bed elevated to prevent aspiration, and two other factors, uh, DBT prophylaxis and GI prophylaxis that were just general care patterns that would improve the care of patients who were mechanically ventilated. We felt very importantly, though, that there were some other evidence-based practices that actually could reduce the rate of ventilator-associated pneumonia, and so we expanded the bundle. The bundle was expanded to include chlorhexidine twice daily in the posterior pharynx, a very uh, dedicated and uh, meticulous method for cleansing the mouth or oral hygiene led by Sharon Dickinson and our nursing leadership group in the surgical intensive care unit. And also expanding the spontaneous awakening and breathing trial to a very early time point in the day and trying to minimize sedation. So we actually uh, try to wean sedation, completely stop it as quickly as possible, get the patient to wake up and breathe so that we can determine if we can get rid of the endotracheal tube, which is really the offending agent uh, that harbors bacteria and can induce ventilator-associated pneumonia. We also have had great compliance uh, by our nursing staff in the ICU for keeping the head of the bed elevated. Uh, we utilize a daily goal sheet to actually review all of these issues related to our VAP protocol and VAP bundle within the uh, surgical intensive care unit. So we started out with a rate of about 22 to 25 uh, VAPs per 1,000 ventilator days, and currently we're down to less than four per 1,000 ventilator days. So we've had about a 75% reduction in ventilator-associated pneumonia. I think there is uh, one important component to, to review, and that is uh, that it really does take a multidisciplinary team effort with everyone consistently trying to put forward the pieces of the VAP bundle uh, and optimizing care. Uh, no amount of stress on that point really is enough. It really needs to be the entire group championing the effort. And there is, I think, one other thing that is uh, critically important. Um, when I took over uh, taking care of the SICU a couple of years ago, the way we were making the diagnosis of pneumonia was variable. Uh, sometimes we got non-quantitative cultures, sputum cultures. Sometimes we did bronchoalveolar lavage. Sometimes we did not. It was really very variable practice. And now we have completely standardized um, our definition of ventilator-associated pneumonia. We no longer use non-quantitative aspirates um, to identify pneumonia in our surgical ICU patients. Everyone that is intubated that we are concerned might have a pneumonia uh, actually gets a bronchoscopy with bronchoalveolar lavage with quantitative cultures or gets what we call a non-bronchoscopic BAL. It is a small catheter that is put down the endotracheal tube that can be utilized to obtain a very distal specimen in the airways and is sent for quantitative culture. And that is led by our respiratory therapy group who are a very critical component of uh, this entire uh, effort. We also um, should point out the um, very important uh, protocol of ventilator weaning that we have in our ICU every day. Um, our respiratory therapists have Consistent ventilator weaning every minute of every day does not rely on a physician to begin to wean the patient from mechanical, ventila uh, mechanical ventilation. The respiratory therapists are circling the unit and weaning that patient every minute that the patient can spontaneously breathe. And 
that enables us to actually get our patients extubated more promptly.